Hi, this is Lori, and this is the start of a new series where I'll be making robots. It's time for Lori's robot channel to actually have some videos about robots. I started on this journey to learn electronics and robotics and programming um, because of the kit that I'm going to start with first. I got this kit, the Sunfounder Pi Car V, V for video, I think, a kit about three years ago um, as I got my first Raspberry Pi. And I started working on the kit, and as I went into the instructions, I realized that I could put it together, but I really didn't understand anything about all the parts and components and some of the programming that I'd be doing. So I set the kit aside and said, I need to go to the basics and get started learning the components that are used in robots and learning some of the programming techniques that are used for robotics as well. Well, now it's, it's time to uh, start doing some of these robot projects and uh, start expanding my skills to put the whole robot together. Here's some of the details about the Pi car from Sunfounder. Uh, they call it a smart video car. And uh, so the intent is to be able to um, stream from this USB camera. It says it's a wide-angle camera, and you'll be able to stream from it. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that it has a, a pan and tilt mechanism uh, to point the camera around. Uh, so that, that looks fun. Uh, the other interesting thing about the kit is that it has these uh, clutch servos. And so if it, it gets too much, uh, too much force on them, then uh, apparently clutches and protects the gears, um, which can be a problem with really cheap servos, so that's nice. You now my kit was dated uh, July 2021. Um, when you go to the Sunfounder site to look at it, it's currently sold out, but there are still um, ones available on Amazon from Sunfounder, so you can still purchase this kit. Um, I went to the GitHub site, too, to kind of see uh, you know, how current the software for this was. And uh, there was an update about five months ago, so that's, that's a, a positive. And uh, it says in the readme there that the server runs under Python 3 and Django 2, and the client runs under Python 3 and PyQt5. Well, that's, a <laughs> that's nice to know, but uh, there's the two things that I don't know anything about, Django 2 and PyQt5. I don't know that either. So, uh, yeah, I went and uh, just uh, did some Googling to see what PyQt5 was, and so... It's a cross-platform C++ libraries um, to do uh, things with your desktop and Bluetooth and web browsers and multimedia and so forth. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's something, um, if I'm going to use the, the web streaming part of this code, I, I guess I'm going to have to learn a little bit about that, um, which I said is a little intimidating because maybe not something I'm that interested in. And Django, I've heard of that. I knew it was for web uh, development. So it's a high-level Python web framework. Um, so that's interesting. Um, so uh, I'll have to spend a little bit of time, I guess, learning about that as well if I want to focus on that part of it. But I kind of think my focus will be more on just, um, you know, using the car in, in basic uh, robotic mode. So I just like to be able to um, move the car forward, <laughs> move the car back, make it turn left and right. Um, as you'll see when I go through a description of the parts, uh, there's it's an open source uh, car, so uh, all the code's available, and they did expose a lot of pins so that you can add additional sensors to it, and I definitely want to um, at least try to do like a, a object avoidance um, and maybe with the camera, some uh, color recognition, uh, QR codes, some, something like that. So um, to do that, it looks like that's not things that they program. So I'd, I'd have to get into the inner workings of some of the libraries they built to control things on the car and, um, and write my own code to do some of those things and add those sensors to, to the car. But I mean, it's just a Raspberry Pi, so hopefully... Um, some of the things I've learned uh, in using Raspberry Pis and using electronics with them, I can, I can bring to the to the car. Well, our next step is to just uh, start building the car. So I'll show uh, all the parts that are in the car, and then we'll start working our way 
uh, through building it. All right, so um, we gave a little introduction to the robot. Um, here's all the parts put out. And I thought I'd just point out a few of the interesting items uh, in it. Um, first, I think, are the, are the uh, boards that they include. Uh, so we'll start off with the simplest one. This is the um, motor driver board. Um, so I think it's a pretty standard board. I mean, it's, it's very nicely made, and uh, yeah, I kind of like the colors. looks good. Um, and lots of uh, sort of easy connects so that you don't have to do any soldering. Uh, so you can see here there's a lot of uh, the cables that will be used to connect things together, and then some cable management uh, as well involved. Um, so, so that's the motor driver board. Let's see. This is the servo board. So this is a, a typical board that you can buy to, to control servos. and So we can do 16 servos there. Uh, we only have three uh, in the kit. Um, but So this board is probably useful for other things if I decide not to keep this uh, robot together. Um, again, pretty nice and looks good. So yeah, it's the, what is it, the PCA9685. So I think these are boards you can you could buy, um, maybe not with all these nice connectors. Also made nicely. And then this is the hat that will go onto the uh, Raspberry Pi. And uh, they call it the Robot Hats. <laughs> I don't know what the S is for. Um, but it has a step-down converter, it says here. So you can, you can input 6 to 12 volts, and then it'll put out 5 volts, 3 amps, I guess. Um, it has an analog to digital uh, converter, um, PCF8591. I think it's, it said it was an 8-bit converter. It has some LEDs on it. Um, so this is the heart, I guess, of the, of the robot. That's where the power will come in. And then it has an on-off switch here as well, uh, UART. And then these pins, I believe, will be able to use with sensors here. This, uh, this is to anal uh, the analog to digital converter. And then here's some other things that I think we can expand. And the kit advertises itself as, as uh, open source, so um, it says you can go in and you know, start your own programming, um, which is probably what I'm interested in more than kind of the intent of the car was to kind of create this uh, video that you could have show up on your iPad or your computer or your phone, um, and you could see what it was seeing. And that's sort of interesting to me, but uh, actually I'd just like to make some programs to drive it forward and... Um, it does have one uh, example about uh, having it track a, a colored ball. That, that sounds pretty interesting to me. I'm a little nervous that that, because it's, it's an older kit now that I'm getting around to it, it may not, software that they put together for that may not be um, ready to go. But anyways, I, I digress. Uh, so, you know, typical motors here. Um, here's a camera for the video part of it. Um, I'll, I'll take this apart and talk a little bit more about this camera. I think one controls the steering and the other two uh, control a pan, the pan and tilt for um, the camera. And I think this is the pan and tilt pieces here that we we'll use, or at least some portion of them are. And you can see sort of the chassis. It's, it's nicely put together. It, it's a little flexible. I saw some negative comments about this bending and warping uh, in use, but uh, yeah, you can see how it's labeled where things go. Um, so all in all, I think that all looks good. Got a few tools that you'll need. Put everything together and then a bunch of hardware bags here, so I won't go through all those. All the hardware, it's all nicely labeled. Um, you can see here it uh, tells you what each bag contains and how many pieces should be in the bag so you can tell if you have everything. The power is going to come from you know one of these uh, 18 6, 650s actually two of them and then this will plug into that hat and I have a couple of those I, I purchased them and then in the wheels so here are the wheels uh, two different front and back uh, actually I don't remember which was which um, so they, they feel nice uh, got a little bit of grip to them. 
Yeah, so that's everything here. And I think if you just built this straight through, I'm suspecting this would take you an hour or two to put together. And it comes with a pretty nice uh, instruction manual. And uh, also on the website, there's um, up-to-date uh, instructions uh, to uh, do it. But it's all nice in color and uh, I think really shows you how to put things together. So I'm not anticipating that this part of it's going to be very difficult at all. Um, but we'll see as I put it together. Like I said, I may just show some photos of the before each step and after each step. And then if anything was confusing, then I'll try to um, film that or discuss that during the video. Not sure how many videos I'll need to, to cover building this and at least getting started doing some programming with it. But we'll see how it goes. So I took the camera apart try to figure out what kind of a camera it was. Um, it doesn't really say in any of the instructions and there wasn't a data sheet on the GitHub site so I opened it up and uh, looked around for some identification and I found a little something here on the back. Some numbers here. I googled those up and uh, I didn't find a lot but I did find somebody who did a teardown of this camera and uh, interestingly enough if, if you read the, um, the little lensy thing here cover I guess more than anything it actually says it's an 8 megapixel camera um, which I didn't think it was e either looking at the kind of the quality of it just didn't look like it would be that kind of quality um, I'll show next uh, the teardown page that shows that this is maybe a 640 by 480 and can possibly do 30 frames per second. Um, it does have the ability to, I guess, do some, you know, some zooming in and out here to focus. Um, that seems kind of like not too useful on a moving, <laughs> on a moving car. Um, so my guess is I'm going to put this in, um, but one of the first upgrades I'm going to do is probably put a better camera on this uh, on this robot. Here's the teardown uh, web page that I found for the camera. This looks exactly like the one that's in the kit, and you can see some of the pictures where they've uh, taken it apart to see what's involved in it. And uh, I guess where they were looking at it, they said the seller said it was a 5 megapixel camera. And um, as I said, if you look at the lens frame, it's called, it says 8 megapixel. Um, definitely is not either of those things. And he went through and um, took it apart and saw the different supported resolutions. And that's where I kind of came up with uh, the resolutions and the frames per second uh, for this camera. So I'll, I'll put the link. Uh, in the description so you can kind of see how it's doing and he did some some testing of it to see how it did I used it as a microscope even um, so it's not suitable for 24 7 use firmware is a bit flaky freezes about once a week <laughs> okay those are all not too great and here's the pros and cons I won't go through all of them but you can pause the video if you want to read them uh, so yeah this is definitely um, something I probably want to replace with a nice uh, Raspberry Pi camera. Uh, so it's good I purchased a couple of those to have around. Well, I thought I'd also include the items you'll need to get the robot going. First off, uh, probably most importantly and most expensive, we'll be getting your hands on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Raspberry Pis are available now, so that's good. And uh, I've seen some comments from users that, uh, that the Pi 4 was the way to go with this uh, car. So I have a Pi 4 2 gigabyte um, that I'm going to try in it. Uh, I hope that's good enough. I've got a couple of 2 gigabytes and uh, I thought uh, using them in robots would be the use for them. So I've got that handy. And then of course we'll need a an SD card for the for the Pi. So I have one of those 32 gig. That ought to be enough I think for the programming I'll do. Probably more than enough. And then we'll need some of these uh, 
you know, 18, 650 uh, batteries to go into that battery pack we just uh, we just put together. So I, I picked those up and it recommended the ones that have the little buttons uh, in the manual. So I went ahead and made sure I got that kind of battery. Um, depending on where you go, these can be expensive. So those are some things you got to buy. And so that kit... Um, well, I got a lot of negative comments on Amazon because people didn't realize you needed a Raspberry Pi and you needed batteries and all that kind of stuff. It very clearly says in the direct in the advertisement it, it does need those things, but you know I guess as people are looking at robot kits, they don't necessarily know these details. So um, that's important to know that you have to have those to uh, to build the kit. Well, I think that's where we'll end this first uh, video for the series on the Pi Car Kit. And uh, the next video, probably the next two videos, will be doing the actual building of the kit. And then uh, the following videos will hopefully uh, be the programming and operation of the uh, Pi Car. I hope you'll uh, join me for the additional videos, and I want to thank you for watching.